I discovered so many incredible fragrances this year. This list was really, really hard to put together. I tried to limit it to just a few because obviously I don't want to be sitting here talking to you guys about 20, 30 fragrances. There were a lot and the ones that I have on the chair beside me are a few of the real standouts. There are budget fragrances here. There are some higher end fragrances, things that really captivated my nose, like amazing finds. Not all of these are 2022 releases. So I did cover the 2022 releases in other videos that I will link in the description and at the end of the video. Also one of them up here, if you guys wanted to see only 2022 releases. But these ones, some of them are newer. Some of them are like, it's embarrassing how long I have slept on these. But if that sounds interesting to you and you want to know some of my favorite discoveries, then just keep on watching. And if you're new here, my name is Yana. This is The Scented. We talk about all things fragrance and exciting new things coming to the channel as well. So stay tuned for that. I will let you guys know what I have cooking. It is requested stuff. So yeah, stay with me, stick around. We'll do the fun fragrance things together. Let's get started. Here's one that I actually forgot to include in my best designer fragrances of 2022. So I'm mentioning it first here. This is Narciso Crystal. I am notorious for my love of Narcissos. I love them all. There is not one that I dislike, I don't think. And this one is beautiful, easy, everyday wearing. This is reminiscent of Narciso Poudre but a lot more sheer, very much like a veil. Like it, it's very, very lovely. Crystal is the perfect name for it. It gets a little bit of hate on Fragrantica, but I think people don't like when something isn't perfectly, incredibly unique. This one, it's easy. It has freesia, it's very feminine. It's a little bit floral. It has that beautiful, soft, clean musk. I find this one such a perfect, easy wearing signature scent. I wear it a lot. If you're into light, airy, clean, feminine fragrances that do still have a little bit of a hook, something interesting in them. This one is perfect. It's a lot lighter than the other Narciso. So if you did struggle with that heavy musk that some of them have, this one is a lot more like beginner level. It's a lot more easy on the nose. It's not headache inducing. Like when I was pregnant, I would get a lot of headaches from musks. This is not one that I think would have triggered me at that time. It's just, it's light, it's airy. I wear it a ton. It's one of my favorite new releases. Definitely one of the best for 2022. I think that objectively though, maybe not one of the best because you know, maybe the value isn't there for some people, but I personally do love it. So for me, it is one of my favorite discoveries. Another one I've been really loving and wearing a ton is from Maison Maisa and it's called Catalia. This smells almost exactly like Rouge Trafalgar from Dior, from that private collection that's super expensive. This is a niche brand and a lesser known niche brand. They constantly have great sales going on. Like right now they've been having a Black Friday and a Christmas sale. I don't know if that's still on, but they were doing like 50% off. If they're not running their sales anymore, I do have a promo code. I think they said they were gonna do 30 off for my viewers. So anything that I have in terms of promo codes will be in the description. But yeah, great sales and the value is really there because they're all super long lasting. If you wanted a great Rouge Trafalgar dupe, I don't think this is meant to be a dupe. Like I don't think the intention was there with this fragrance and this is not a dupe house by any means. They have all unique creations. It just happens to smell very, very similar. It's like a sparkling berry and almost like a pine scent. Really lovely. I get a lot of compliments on this one. This has a huge throw. Like people really smell this fragrance and it's really enjoyable. I like this around Christmas time, even though it is a fresh scent. It's like my fresh Christmas go-to. It really smelled exactly like our Christmas tree. The day that we got our Christmas tree, I was wearing this fragrance and I was like, they smell so similar. Another one that I purchased based on recommendations is from Coastal Carolina and it is Southern Peach Tea. This one has some gentle spices. It doesn't smell like a candy peach or anything. It actually, it smells like a fuzzy fresh peach there is a tea aspect to this. There's some gentle spices. This one I'm going to be wearing a ton in the summer. It is a very unique take on peach, watery, uplifting, and it is quite strong. So yeah, I am excited to wear this one. I've only discovered it now. Thank you to those of you guys who have recommended this to me. It's fantastic. Another one that I've been reaching for a ton and I'm so happy to have discovered it. It's not the newest release, but the EDP I only picked up this year and it's Irresistible from Givenchy. I believe it's a 2021 release. It's a really elegant feminine kind of 
powdery pear scent, musky, really, really lovely, like super elegant. I'm in love with this. The rose is really gentle. It's not a super sweet rose. It's all just kind of clean powdery, very delicate, very dainty, very feminine. The bottle suits it perfectly. It is one that I've worn a lot and it just seems to really vibe with my skin chemistry. But a more affordable alternative that I've discovered is from the City's collection from Zara and it's Captivatingly Paris. It smells almost identical. So if you guys wanted like a cheaper dupe of it that smells almost identical, this one is amazing. The performance is great. And really the whole Vibrant Cities collection seems to be a dupe of a popular fragrance. I did cover the whole collection, except for this one since it's the newest. I'll link that video up here for you guys. This one is a great dupe for Givenchy Irresistible. Embarrassingly late to the party on this one. This is Atelier des Ors Lune Feline. This is a smoky vanilla scent. It's really like, I can't describe how spectacular this fragrance is. Of course, we all love the gold flakes in here. Spices like cardamom and cinnamon, pepper, it, it all is like all intertwined with this vanilla that is just balsamic and just a touch smoky. Very, very good scent. Like one of the best vanillas ever. I'm not a vanilla lover and I do really love this one. Now, L'Orchestre Parfum Piano Santal. This is butter. It smells like melted butter with woodiness to it. There's a beautiful skin note in here. It's warm, it's sensual. One of my favorite sandalwood fragrances for sure. I can't say enough good things about this one. This is my favorite from the entire L'Orchestre Parfum collection. I think it is their most popular one and there is a reason for it. It is just such a creamy, lovely, enticing sandalwood scent. Now, another one that's been recommended to me and those of you who've recommended it, thank you so much. I just got Carner Barcelona Tardes. This is a lovely green, almond scent. I know the correct pronunciation is Barcelona, but I'm not going to do that because quick history lesson. The reason why they do the th, as I learned from my Spanish teacher, is because they once had a king who had a lisp, so they integrated it into the language. Anyway, this is just a beautiful, lovely green almond scent. It's like a lotion. It is one of the most uplifting, bright almond scents. It's not uh, like a dark cherry almond or anything like that sort of take where it's vanillic and it's warm and it's rich. I love the wooden cap of the bottle. Yeah, this is really lotion-y. In fact, the whole Carner Barcelona collection is kind of very easy. Like I'm, I'm working my way through the discovery set and I'm really enjoying all of them. Not all of them have great performance. This one actually has outstanding performance. It's very fresh, like creamy green almond. That's the best way that I could describe it. Um, really just smells like a lovely rich lotion and it's worth the price point. Like it is definitely worth it. I'm not sure if I do have any promo codes on this, but if I do, again, it's all in the description. Okay, the next one, I'm probably the most late to the party. I'm like 20 years late to this party, Amouage Dia. This is a beautiful aldehydic scent. It's very clean smelling, it's very classic, very, very classic. In fact, I usually struggle with Amouage fragrances because of how classic they come through. But this one is just, it really reminds me kind of of a blend of Chanel Number no. 5 and the Dior Classic Red Cap, which I adore. It has the warmth of like sun-kissed laundry, very fresh, uplifting soap bubbles, classic, elegant, feminine, not outdated though. And I'm loving it. And as it is super long lasting, it develops differently than the DNG Red Cap, but the opening kind of reminds me of that. Just like a blend of those two aldehydic classic scents. I love my classic aldehyde, so this one I really, really love. Of the amouages that I've smelled, which have probably been about six or seven, this one is my favorite. Okay, couple more. Uh, Room 1015 Cherry Punk. This is a cherry and leather scent, but it is less leather and more cherry on my skin especially. It gives me the satisfaction of like real cherry, warm cherry. Reminds me a little bit of Dancing Roses, the discontinued Victor and Rolf fragrance. That cherry note, it's not the same fragrance, but that cherry note is very, very similar. And it's not a sharp leather. It's very, very smooth. It is one of my favorite leather fragrances. This might've been on my number one in my cherry fragrances list, which I covered over here. Commodity Rain. This smells like a waterfall more than rain. Rain has this kind of cement 
dirty acidic smell sometimes like earthiness and I and I like that smell I like the smell of the outdoors after it rains but I don't know that I would want to smell per se like it commodity rain is dew drops it's fresh it's sunny and bright it's like a dream version of rain and it's a perfect out of the shower scent it's very clean just clean girl vibes all the way this one I reach for a ton especially after a shower when I just want to feel extra clean and I love this like full watery aspect that it has it just it feels like real water there are actually so many incredible fragrances from commodity that I've discovered this year they're like whole discovery set is amazing i really love gold moss whiskey i'm obsessed with whiskey i think leather as well is really good but only for men and rain i recently was wearing through my sample of bois from the archives collection which is like a gorgeous skin woody scent but still has this element of it's enticing so yeah i think that one might be my next one I, i'm just i'm hooked on the entire commodity lineup are you guys with me or are you not commodity lovers? Cause yeah, I'm like, I've become completely obsessed with this brand. And lastly, I just picked up a bottle of Lake and Sky Midnight 07. I got their discovery set and I thought that I would love 1111, which has been on my wish list for a while. It's supposed to be like a kind of clean skin scent, similar to, I guess, not a perfume or Glossier U. This is really in there i just opened this i got through my whole sample of midnight 07 i had to buy a bottle chapters indigo has it if you're in canada i didn't know that they did i thought only anthropology carried this brand i don't think anthropology carries it anymore so i bought this at chapters indigo this is described as a woody vanilla scent but it has a note of fig as well and it really reminds me of grand soir from mfk but kind of better like this has a touch of smokiness, like warm amber facets in here as well. It's really nice. It is light patchouli, not a dark patchouli. Very, very easy wearing. It is like a little bit of a dark fragrance, but safe, like a safe dark fragrance. So people who want a dark fragrance but don't want anything too edgy, this is perfect. This is safe dark. This is like you're pretending to be edgy but you're not really edgy i mean that in the best way possible this one for me of the whole lineup was my favorite i took the whole discovery set and sampled all of them um yeah this one was the standout i did like 1111 but i don't think i'll be getting a full bottle anytime that soon i do like it though but midnight 07 was like a huge standout i had to buy it instantly so those are my favorite discoveries of the year that kind of just really grabbed my attention that really stood out to me that i do actually wear a ton i would love to hear what some of your favorite discoveries were of the year they don't have to be new fragrances look some of these are 20 years old better late than never so i'm happy to check out any of your discoveries as well if i haven't smelled them already and thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you next time don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it bye